Today I'm gonna to be making a part on the Swiss Nano. I've got a threaded pin made out of 17.4 stainless steel. And this is gonna be one of the first times I've actually programmed something on the Nano. We're gonna be running two kinds of materials, one out of 17.4 stainless steel and the other out of brass. The brass is so you can see the tool paths without coolants because I'm gonna need it on the 17.4. So let's get started. So I wanna talk about this machine since it was the first time that I set up the Nano. You can see that the way this machine is laid out is already similar to the GT32. We have all of our tools over here. I've got three OD tools from Horn, a turning tool, a threader, and a part off tool. I've got two live tools. I'm using Kenna Metal for that. So I've got a Harvey 1TE and a 70,000th drill. Now coming from the world of regular lathes, I'm still blown away by the bar feeders on these Tornoses, especially being used to the old four foot long bar feeders where now I'm coming over here and running gigantic 12 feet bars. But this one's cool. The outside of this looks like the chain gun from Doom. You can see on the inside, we have all of our chambers here that we can load in material. And in the bottom, that's where our current bar is loaded. So you rotate to whatever bar size you want to run. And then in this bottom chamber here, that's where your pusher is. So you can stock this thing with all kinds of different size bars. Just make sure you don't run the wrong one through your collet. One other thing, if you drop anything, which you will when you set this thing up, you can get access to it right here. Did you drop something in there before? Maybe a wrench or two. <laughs> <laughs> This is a fairly simple part, so programming it wasn't too different than what I did already on the GT32. I didn't have to turn this in sections because it's such a small part, but I did have to think about the order a little bit. The very first thing we do is we face the front of our part, but then afterwards I come in with an end mill and I put a little flat on the top of the OD. And then we bring in our 70,000th drill, the same drill I used on the previous part, and we put a hole through the entire part. And then we, after we put our little hole in there, we turn the entire OD of the part. I have a rough and finish pass going on this part with a 2,000th radius tool taking a 125 step over on the OD of the part. Now one other thing on this part is with the threading pass. I'm actually using a standard M6 by one thread for this part. Now in solid cam, I can just select that I'm doing a metric thread and it brings up a chart of all your different thread sizes. So I just had to select M6 by one on this chart and it puts in all the parameters for the size of this thread. I just have to tell it what my step overs are and if I wanna use a can cycle or not. And just like our other part, we can control things like our pickoff operation through solid cam. I can also simulate my program in solid cam with the machine up so I can see all of my clearances and I can make sure everything is gonna clear and nothing is gonna crash. So I'm over here on the Mint Toyo Comparator, just double checking the threads in the part, just making sure everything looks good. You know, a part like this on a normal lathe, it actually would give you a lot of trouble because of how small everything is. Your material wanting to bend, the tools putting too much pressure on it. On a Torno Swiss machine, it's really cool that it can crank out these parts all day, no problems. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and make sure you sign up for Boombastic. It's happening November 12th through 14th. It's our biggest event of the year, you're not going to want to miss it.